what it's all about. That's all it's about. Nothing else. No show. Nothing fancy. Just the word of God. Welcome to Fest Man of Ministries of Miracle Tuesday evening Bible study. Hallelujah. Our pastor is none other than the prophetess Michelle Smith. Our overseer is, of course, the apostle Mathena Ashley. And we also have your host, <laughs> that would be me, uh, Elder Lee Anthony Smith. We welcome all ministers. We welcome all deacons, officials of the church, and the saints, the backbone of it all. Keep on pushing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you will, go ahead and turn to our key verse tonight, Psalms 23, and we'll start with verse 1. We're actually going to do the entire six verses, amen, tonight. But let's start for our key verse, verse 1 of that famous psalm, Psalms 23. And while you're doing that, let me make two quick announcements. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, or any questions about what the teaching is all about, by all means, contact me at my email Smith Lee Anthony 7 at gmail.com. Smith S M I T H Lee Anthony L E A N T H O N Y numeral 7 at gmail.com. And I will get back with you as soon as I can. Glory to God. If you wish to catch at this ministry, by all means, go to dollar sign F M M M 3. Zero six, and we pray over all offerings. I don't care if it's one dollar, one thousand dollars. We pray equally for all who give to this ministry so we can continue the works that God set for us to do. Our key verse, Psalms 23, verse 1. I pray that you're there. If not, don't sweat it, it's not that long, and I'm sure you heard it a thousand times. And it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that is our title. The Lord is my shepherd. Let us pray and we will go further into this world. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this Tuesday evening Bible study. When we leave at the end, I pray that someone will come closer to Jesus because the truth has been told. So in Jesus' name, we pray for a blessed Bible study. Amen, amen, amen. The Lord is my shepherd. We heard it. If you went to any church, you don't have to even go to church. They hear it somewhere. The Lord is is my shepherd. That's what we're going to discuss tonight. Even though I'm sure you heard it a lot of times, let's break it down and piece it together and see what it means more to you this way. Glory to God. Go Stay at Psalms 23. And you know, this is probably the most popular scripture in the Holy Bible. It is part of the Old Testament called the book of Psalms. And the word Psalms, it refers to instrumental, 
Mm -hmm. With words. Oftentimes with words. So, therefore, it, it is very, very, uh, you know, it's, it's, in the, it's in the field of David. Because David, remember, he played a liar. He sang. Amen. This is what he did. He did most of these psalms that we read is written by King David. Hallelujah. And a psalm, once again, is, is instruments, because he wrote for the instruments. And he also wrote the words to go with them. Hallelujah. So, what prompted him to write this particular song? The Lord is my shepherd. Well, before David became king of Israel, he was a shepherd. He took care of the sheep in the field for the family. That what he, he did it in the morning until nighttime. And sometimes at night he had to go out there when the wolves and the animals, the other animals, were trying to attack. That was his job. And while he was out there, he had many opportunities to study the Word of God, to go into prayer, to hear what it is God wanted him to do. And he really was a very, very righteous man in the eyes of God. And we know he had some mistakes along the way, as we all do. Glory, hallelujah. But he had some serious mistakes along the way. And, but yet, he kept his faith in God through it all. He prayed. And he went through the suffering. His family suffered as a result of his sins. But yet, God said he's a man after his own heart. He made mistakes. He realized what the mistakes were. And he worked previously to correct what he could. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it is a metaphor. Psalms 23. A metaphor. That is, I'm sure you heard that in, in school, in English class, whatever. But metaphor is where you take objects and you make them into life. Mm -hmm. And I wrote one example. Life is a highway. <laughs> Amen. Or here's another one. Her eyes are like diamond. And he's a shining star. Stars, diamonds, and highways are objects, but yet we give them life like figures. This is what David did in Psalms 23. It's a metaphor because he used shepherd to denote God and sheep to denote people. Hallelujah. God's people. Amen. Not just everyone, but God's people, those who obey, those who are under his submission. Hallelujah. So, in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. David described God as the shepherd and we as his flock. Mm -hmm. We the sheep. God is the shepherd. Through this beautiful metaphor, Psalm 23 gives us an invaluable insight into the character of God and his plans for mankind. How he protects us. How he loves us. How he takes us to the next level. So one day, we could be in the kingdom with him forever. That's what this psalm do. So if you're not already, go ahead to Psalms 23. And let's go back to verse 1. And let's move forward. It's only six verses, and they're not long. So let's just go ahead and read and discuss them. The first one. The Lord is my shepherd. God is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't need anything. I go to, not from man, not from the world. What I need, God will provide. He's my provider. Glory to God. He's my helper. He's my protector. So the Lord is my shepherd. This is what a shepherd does. Think about a shepherd in the field. He's not there as a potted plant in the office, you know, just there for looks. He's there to make sure that the wilder animals don't go after the friendly sheep. He's there to protect them from them. He's there to bring them to the still waters so they won't just jump in and drown. He's there to guide them. Hallelujah. And I don't want to get too far into it, so let, let me hold back a little bit there. But this is what our shepherd does. He protects. He provides. He leads. And this is what David is talking about. Protect us from danger. He feeds, he guides, and display unconditional love towards us. This results in the sheep feeling safe. And we shall feel safe. 
knowing that Jesus, Jesus is our protector. Because God gave all power to the Son. Some people want to say, you got two gods. No, no, it's one God. It's one spirit. Jesus just got all the power. That makes him like God. God, God loves him, respect him for what he did for mankind, gave him that kind of power. In heaven and in earth, he reigns. He reigns. If you think of an emperor, emperors over all the territories that he had conquered or his predecessors had conquered, but yet he had governors, he had kings, he had princes, prince, and all that still under him. Amen. But it's still one kingdom. Someone asked me that the other day. I thought I'd share that with you. It's not two gods. It's one God. And Jesus is with God. There is no division at all. At all. I could say Jesus. I'm still referring to God. I could say Lord. I'm referring to God and Jesus. I could say God. Jesus is not left out. No such thing. Let's move on. Supported scripture for that verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I went to 2 Timothy 4 and 18. And it says, And the Lord shall deliver me from evil works. He also keeps temptation because he keeps that stuff away from us and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. He's getting me ready to go to heaven where I can live forever. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is what we're working for. And God will protect us. Jesus will guide us if we just walk that faith walk. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. In green pastures, cheap to eat. Can't eat out of the brown ones. It's no good. Can't eat out of the little ones that are growing. It's not enough. Green pastor, it flourishes with the food that sheep need. He would take us to that in life where we could provide for ourselves and our family members. Glory to God. It looks safe because it is safe and it is peaceful when God is our provider, our protector. All right? So he says, he's leading me besides the still waters. You think of still waters, you think of calmness. You think of peace. But also you need to think. The sheep are not the only one that will come to that water because it's calm and peaceful. You got the wolves, the lions, the t and all these other things surrounding them. But God is there. And he'll protect you while you're at the still waters, peacefully getting your fill. While you're out there working the job that God sent you to do, he's your protector. When things go away, you just hold on. God is working something. He's working something. I can't tell you, but God knows what he's doing to help build you up from that situation. Don't get dismayed. Don't be despair. Some people say, well, now that I'm a Christian, things seem to be going worse for me. Because there's your faith. You hold on to God. By and by, you'll find out what he was fixing. What's left you or what you got away from, you'll find out. It was for your benefit because now you got better in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, let's get a support of scripture. And that will be Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, Jesus answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. He's talking to Satan after 40 days being tempted. He's telling them, you can't live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded out the mouth of God, God is what we got to live by. His word, his way, his direction, his protection is what we depend on. And he made it clear. The devil was tempting him because he knew the body of Jesus was hungry. And he said, take the stone and turn it into bread. Jesus said, man can't live by bread alone. Because Jesus made it 40 days and 40 nights, not by bread, not by any food because he had none, not even water. He made it because his faith and his heavenly father was that strong that he lived off the word of God and the Holy Spirit protected the body so it could sustain him to such a time the angels could come back and minister to him. Hallelujah. I be moving. Verse 3. 
He restored my soul. I restored my strength. Glory to God. My strength was taken away from what I just went through. Can you imagine how Job had to be restored? Peter had to be restored by Jesus. Some may ask how. Well, when Jesus had died on the cross, went to the grave for three days, rose, and he came back to his disciple at an appointed time. They was out there fishing. And Peter ran, because he saw, you know, ran. He swam, actually, because they was out there fishing to the shoreline, because he recognized that was Jesus. And as they was eating, Jesus asked him, like he denied Jesus three times, Jesus restored him by saying, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, of course I love you, God. I, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love everything about you. Then Jesus asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, I do love you. The third time, Peter was kind of like, what is all of this about? But Jesus was in the act of restoring him. You denied him three times, which means I don't love you. I don't trust you. I lost my faith in you. Jesus is restoring him by giving him these chances to get it right. And Peter says, yes. I love you, Lord. Peter was restored. So here it says, he restored my soul. This is how we can get into the kingdom. The soul has got to be right with Jesus. Hallelujah. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me on a path to show me what is good. And a path of what it is he wants me to do. On a path that will evil, when it comes, I am able to go against it. Because I like the way Paul said it. Out of all the good I do, evil shows up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Evil is going to present, it present itself to Jesus, as we just discussed. After 40 days in the wilderness, Satan shows up. So yes, he will show up, but God will lead us to do what is right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go ahead to four. I'm going to give you a supportive scripture for that one. I'll just say this from the ERV, because I use that a lot to help understand when I'm getting a little confused. And it says, he restored my strength. He leads me on a path to show that he is good. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm going to do the same thing for four. I, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, danger is all around me. If you think about it for a minute, to get up and walk into your yard, for those who get the news, I don't think they do that anymore too much throughout the newspaper, because people just, we just go on the internet, you don't read the newspapers that much. But when I was growing up, that was, that's how we got our news, pretty much, through the, the newspaper. And when I was, when I first joined the Navy at the age of 18, I, well, 20, 20 actually, and we, a couple of us got together, bought a nice big house in, in uh, North Charleston, and on Sumner Avenue, amen, glory to God. And we all chipped in, pretty much me, because I was the one who read the newspaper. And there was a girl who came by every morning, and she would throw the paper out the car as her mom was driving her. And we got the news from that. And this is how we kept up with what was going on. Amen. And here, the word of God, God is leading us. God is protecting us. We could read the newspapers. We could listen to other people tell you, don't go here, don't do that, don't eat that, put this back. Yo, know, this is no longer, this is on the recall. But God will show us the way if we believe in him and protect, let him protect us. Hallelujah. So even though I walk through the shallow death, I will fear no evil. We just discussed that. God got this. <laughs> Amen. For thou art with me, thy rod. Rod is a, if I was on the other side, I could bring it out. Long, um, usually circular. Uh, I don't know what I call it, a stick, a long stick that they use if the animals come. You got something to fight with. They don't have to come that close to you because that rod is usually about five feet. Long enough to keep them away, but good enough to keep them. You know, if you have to give them a good smack, you can do it, and they'll run away usually. 
Sometimes when I take my walk, I need to bring my rod with me because these dogs are loose in a lot of places and they'll come after you. Glory to God. I can't count the number of times it happened to me. All right, let's continue. I will fear no evil. God got this. I'm not worried about it. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Staff, of course, is on the other hand, used for walking. Usually comes to a curve at the end, and you use that to help you walk. You can use the rod too, I guess, somewhat. But something about the curve on the end, I guess it gives you more support as you walk. Because you can put your shoulders in it. A lot of people who are tall, you know, they could probably put their shoulders in it at times, and it helps them as they walk. So that rod and that staff protects you. God has that kind of protection over us from all the evil forces that wants to come against us. Let's look at the easy to read version on that one. Even if I walk through a valley as dark as the grave, I will not be afraid of any danger because you are with me. I love the way this is written. Your rod and staff comforts me. Glory to God. We depend on God, our shepherd. David really, really <laughs> got into this one. Some people say he wrote this before he went out to fight Goliath. Don't know. Amen. Okay. When we talk about God leads us, I wrote another one for that. I'm going to give you that scripture. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He leads me. He guides me. He protects me. He showed me the way. Glory to God. Let's look at verse 5. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of of my enemies. That is saying a lot. It is saying so much. Because I know many of us sometimes feel put down by family members, sometimes by friends, if you will, by associates, co-workers. You know, yeah, uh, look at him. He goes to church. Mm, he think he's something. Think he's better than we are because he goes to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh, he got a house now. Got a beautiful family. Mm -hmm. He think he's above us. People would do that. Some would go even further than that. They'll do much more things than that. But I'm going to keep it where we all experience, I'm sure, the put-downs by word of mouth. Well, here, it says, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. One day, they're going to have to sit back and wonder about this joy that you have. How do you get so much joy when we're talking about you? I hear you, but yet, the inner side, the Holy Spirit, will allows me not to take it in. It goes right back out. <laughs> this is how you can do it. We talked last week about how you can avoid the evil forces that come against you. How to avoid diverse, ne ne uh, I think I call it uh, derogatory, or how to avoid, oh, negativity. How to avoid negativity. You, you can't avoid, you can't say you don't hear it. But what you can do is don't let it settle inside. That's when it tears you up. That's when suicide things are being written by the children. They're taking it inside. We have got to show them how to get into the book. And I cover it. I cover it with the word. I cover it with Christian songs. There's one in particular when I was growing up. I remember doing this. They, they say something and it really hurts, but I will say this and sometimes I'll sing it out loud right before them. You could talk about me just as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm gonna bend on my knees. Cause God has saved me. God has saved me. He's been good to me. And I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. I'm so mighty grateful. This is how you get over the things of the world. God will put that in you. Yeah, they're going to talk. The enemy's going to be there. And they will also be there as you get your reward. I read the other day about the bosom of Abraham. 
Well, Lazarus was, not the Lazarus who was with Jesus, another one. Amen. He was a poor man, and he was picked on. He was treated badly by the rich man and his family. The rich man died, and he saw Abraham, and he saw Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham with all the goodness, with all the coolness of heaven while he was down there where it was hot. Glory to God. And he asked Abraham, can you send Lazarus over to give me just a tip of water? <laughs> Lazarus had it. He was in heaven. The enemy, if they don't get it right here on earth, they will surely get it when you go to heaven and they don't. This is why I encourage everyone, stay with God. Job stayed with God. He did not leave God. Some people say, he got. yes, he got angry, but he never cursed God. His wife said, curse God. His friends were saying, why did you do so evil? Yeah, he know he didn't do anything. That's why he said, I will, I, I will plead my case before him to his face. Okay, going into another one. Let's move on to six. <laughs> Last one. And by the way, some people, in, in biblical, you notice that the number three, seven, twelve, and forty, usually, a biblical numbers they describe a lot of things. 40 years in the wilderness. 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. Paul went three days. Jesus, three days in the grave. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, three. Something about those numbers. So what a lot of people would do, they would take the amen at the end of verse 6, and put it as verse 7, just to keep it biblically in the numerical greatness of number 7. Hallelujah. Which is also very popular in the Bible. All right. Truly, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Don't we want that? Goodness and mercy. Well, if you with God, this is what you're going to have. Are they going to start talking about you? Probably not. But we already made that clear, the answer to that. Amen. You use the word. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When you leave earth, and we all, we don't like to talk about it, but we're all going to leave one day. We can't go by age too much. One time, everybody, all the old folks are going to, and young, mm -mm, we got a lot of young people leaving. Too soon. Drugs. Alcohol. These cars that they drive at these outstanding outstanding speeds for what to show off there's a lot of reasons why we're losing our young people quickly but we're all going to go one day and i pray that you especially now that we are towards the end of this that you will know god is your shepherd he's your guide he's your leader hey, amen let me go ahead and get a supportive scripture for six because i'm about to go off <laughs> first peter five and ten but the God of all grace, who hath called us into his internal glory, is to go to heaven with Christ and live there forever. After that, ye have suffered a while. Okay, yeah, we are earth. There are going to be some hard times. Make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, and settle you. All of this will be over. And you'll go to a place. No more crying. No more dying. No more put-downs. All of that will be gone. You will be forever in peace. Someone said, how could anything go forever? Because you're thinking flesh. You're thinking, you're thinking wood. You're thinking material things. Things you can touch. There are things you can't touch, like your soul. It just keeps going. If you want to go into space and see what's out there, those moons, those stars, and all that will go away one day. But the space is still there. That's when I look at the spirit. How can you get rid of it? You can't. You become part. I can't go into details because I don't know it like that. But I do know that you will live forever in peace. Hallelujah. F fine example. You go back to the Bible at Transfiguration. Abraham was gone for over 2,000 something years. But yet. There he was with Jesus. Elijah, 
There he was with Jesus. So it's not a joke. It's real. God is our shepherd. Hallelujah. We discussed Psalm 23 in its entirety. God is our shepherd. That means he protects us. He provides for us. He leads us where we need to go. Today, God is still our provider. I can't tell you exactly what David was going through at that time. You know, many say he was about to go and fight the Goliath. Could be. But this is what the Holy Spirit put in him to write. And we all got an insight into what our Heavenly Father feel for us. What he does for us constantly, always. Hallelujah. I pray that this has been a blessed message for you. It's been one for me as I presented it. As he said, I wanted to go all over, but time won't let us do that. But I do thank you for joining us. Please uh, join us on Sunday. We usually come on at 11. It won't be this Sunday, which will be the, if I'm not mistaken, it will be, that will be the 15th. Because this Sunday we go to our home search in Somerville, so we won't be here. However, we'll be back the following Sunday, and I'll have the word then. Hallelujah. So please join us on the fourth Sunday. And every Sunday after, we'll Pastor Smith will come and deliver what thus says the Lord. If you don't have a home church, please consider Fetch Manor, even if you have to go internet for right now, and we will help you search for a place to go physically as well. That's what we do. We help guide you. We are not the shepherd. We work for the shepherd. We are servant. We are handmaid of the shepherd. And we'd be glad to assist you. So let us know. Once again, email smithleanthony7 at gmail.com. Until next week, you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. I'd like to close with the entire Psalm 6, I'm sorry, Psalms 23, all six verses will be our benediction. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup running over, surely goodness and mercy. So follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You'll have a blessed week in Jesus.